I saw Jesus crucified. I spoke to him as he died. I saw him in his struggle. I watched as he breathed his last breath and when he stopped breathing, I lost my breath too. The one who walked on water is no more. The one who fed 5,000 is now food for the worms and if he has been defeated, what does that mean for me? I thought that he would be the king who would rise up and rule our nation. I thought that we were the ones to bring truth and revelation, but it turns out we were wrong. I mean, maybe we imagined this all along. As I watched his body taken down from the cross, I saw my friend was gone. And he was the one who found me. How could this be? He must have gone before his time. It must have been too soon. It must have been an illusion or a dream. He can't be in a tomb. I can't come to grips with the thought that the man who claimed to be I am was slain by the hands of men. And then she burst through the door. Our friend Mary, she said, someone had taken the body of the Lord. So we ran to the tomb, only to find an empty room. And the stone was rolled away. I looked on the floor, and I saw his clothes. And that's when I knew he rose. Jesus is alive. He did walk on water. He did feed the 5,000. He did raise Lazarus from the dead and heal thousands. He did make the wine. He did talk to God. He did pray for those who put him on the cross and he raised back to life. Just like Lazarus, except for he would never die again. Jesus took death. Nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. A crown of thorns on his head. For you. He laid his life down and he took it back again. Jesus is alive. Come on, let's get up on our feet. Let's make some noise. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's risen. Come on, let's put our hands together. We're going to celebrate. We're going to rejoice.
Jesus is alive, and it's the whole reason we're here today. There's this incredible call and response that's been passed down through the ages. I'm going to say he is risen, and you're going to respond with everything in you. He is risen indeed. Are you ready? Hey, he is risen, church. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus this morning. Hey, we're so glad that we get to be together with you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It's an incredible day. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Jim. My wife and Beth and I, we serve as pastor here at Real Life Church. We're so glad that we get to be together today to celebrate the greatest day in human history. We're going to spend some time in worship. We're going to go to God's Word in just a little while. Our kids are having an incredible, dynamic, uh, passionate worship service of their own down at the other end of the building. And here's what I believe today. Jesus is going to meet with us. Jesus shows up. Whenever two or three of us are gathered in his name, the presence of Jesus shows up. And so we're going to pray. We're going to give him our best worship today because he's a, he is alive. Can we pray together this morning? We're going to go back to worship. Jesus, we love you. We're so thankful. Lord, you had a plan all along. And what looked like it was the worst day in human history on Friday, as you hung and died on a cross, Lord, in just three days became the best day. The most powerful event in human history is the cross and the empty tomb. You are alive, and you're here, and you're changing hearts and minds. You're performing miracles to this day, and we love you. We are a church of the resurrection. Holy Spirit, come and have your way in our presence today. Lord, this is all for you. It's our worship, and it's our adoration. We praise you. And everyone said amen. Are you ready to worship? Let's go, team.
last week. It's called Another One, and it just, it's a song that fills me with hope. It's a song that just, it sets this expectant attitude that Jesus is going to do more. He's going to do miracles again and again and again. Today we're celebrating that stone rolled away. If he got up and he get, came out of that grave, what else can he do for us again and again and again? Let's sing this together. You do everything. You do everything on purpose. I can feel your spirit stirring.
Lord, if that's what we have, it's what we'll give. We give you our praise. We give you that hallelujah this morning. It's the cry of our hearts, Jesus, that you would know just how much we love you, that you would know how much we want to glorify your name, that you would know how thankful we are for the price that you paid, how thankful we are for your great power that you rose from the grave, that we get to be the sons and daughters of Christ, that we get to join you in eternal salvation. Jesus, we thank you so much for everything that you are. You are goodness. You are love. Everything that is good in this life comes from you, Lord. And we give you that praise. We give you that honor. We lift you high in this place this morning. And in your great name, we all said together, amen. Amen. Hey, can we give Jesus our best praise? Let's, on, let's give him 15 seconds of our very best praise. Lift up a shout. Come on, souls. Lift it up. Come on, let's lift him up. We love you, Jesus. We celebrate you. You are alive. You're worthy to receive praise. Come on, lift it up. Don't let it die down. Come on, let's give Jesus our best praise. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. There's no one like you, and we give you our best praise. And everyone said amen. Amen. Hey, why don't you give someone a quick high five as you have a seat here this morning. So glad that you're with us here at Real Life Church. It's so great to see so many faces here today. Like I said just a few minutes ago, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Jim, and have the incredible privilege of getting to lead Real Life Church as pastor. And this is my favorite day of the year. I, uh, the people who call Real Life Church home, you guys know how much I love baseball. And it was opening day. This is better than opening day. And uh, glad that we get to celebrate Resurrection Sunday with each and every one of you. So glad to be gathered together today. If you, if you are new with us, you should have received a welcome guide on your way in. It'll look a little bit like this, maybe some different colors. I know there's some blue ones and some yellow ones. We like to mix it up. I just want to point that out to you today because it'll tell you a little bit about who we are and what we feel like we're called to do here in Roseville, the Twin Cities and beyond, and every one of you should have had a Connect card on your seat as you walked in. Why don't you, everybody go ahead and grab that real quick. I just want to make sure that you've got it. Maybe wave it at me. If you're part of our Pentecostal tradition growing up, we used to wave white hankies. Uh, we're going to wave a white Connect card. Come on, it's more fun when you play along. Everybody wave that. All right, I just want to make sure you all had one. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that card here in just a few minutes. But if you are new with us here today, we want to tell you how glad you, we are that you're here with us, that we get to worship with you, that we get to go to God's Word with you. Uh, this next moment might not be for you, and that's totally okay, because what we do as Real Life Church is part of our worship is we give. It's part of what we call our sacrifice of praise. We love to be a church that's faithful and generous because every time we give, every time we return back to the Lord his tithe, I think something happens inside of us where we look a little bit more like Jesus. And so Real Life Church family, if you came prepared to give in person, I know about 90% of you give online. Our family gives online as well. Uh, but our giving stations, if you want to give in person, are right there in the back by the doors. All the ways you can give are right here on the screen. And uh, I just want to pray a blessing over you as you give today. Can we pray together? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the gift of the cross and the resurrection. We don't want to move too quick past this moment. But Lord, your sacrifice, when we sing a song that says something like, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Lord, a, a, a worshipful heart holds nothing back from you. And so as we return our tithes, as we get to walk out being a, a generous church, Lord, it's a, it's a statement that says we trust you and that we believe it's truly more blessed to give than receive. And so as every one of my friends here gives, we give with joyful hearts. It's a, it's a joyful reflection of the gift that you gave to us. 
And so as they give, Lord, I pray you bless every part of their life. I pray you bless their work. I pray you bless their family. I pray you bless their relationships. I pray you bless their finances. And Lord, I pray you bless their church as well. We want to be a church that looks more and more like you. And this is a simple way that we do that. And so we pray and we give in your name. And everyone said amen. Amen. Thanks for worshiping. I believe Pastor Miranda and Pastor Taylor are coming up for some real life news. How's it going, team? Hey, everybody. Oh, you're taking my microphone? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, just, I just realized we all are wearing gray. We are. That's it's awesome. a good look. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. We this didn't plan it, but look. I like it. I like this. We no, didn't plan it. I didn't, didn't plan it. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. It's a good day. It is a good day. So wonderful to have you all with us. Everybody who's part of our church family, can we just make a loud noise for all of our guests and first-time visitors today? It is so, so wonderful to have you with us because if there's a lot of you, that means we have a donut wall out in the lobby. Who wants to keep the donut wall out there? I love that. Good morning, Pastor Good morning. Miranda. How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. So what we usually get up here and do on Sunday mornings is we talk about some real life news, some of the things that are coming up, events, things that we want you to know about. If you want like a, a weekly email of all the things that are happening, you can go online to connect.reallifemn.com. Uh, Org and sign up for our newsletter. You'll get that right in your inbox every week. But the couple of things that we're talking about today are coming up in just a couple of weeks here. First off, we have Equip Conference happening on April 19th and 20th. If you've never been to Equip Conference, it's a Friday night and Saturday during the day um, event. It's full of worship. It's full of messages and there are breakouts. It's all to train and empower and equip not just church ministry leaders, but people within the church to do all kinds of ministry. So if you are curious about getting to know more, even about just how do I talk to my next door neighbor? How do I host people well in my house and share Jesus with them? Equip Conference is an awesome resource to come and learn all sorts of things. We're going to be there. It's totally free for the whole church. If you would like to come, just go to our webs, our church center event page and sign up with us and we will see you there. It's going to be a fun couple of it's days. It's going to be awesome. So I don't know, you know this. And a lot of our, our staff, we know this, but there's kind of a secret sauce at Real Life. Uh -huh. And you know what that is? Our volunteers and leaders. Oh, yeah, right? 100%. Like We truly have the best leaders around. We couldn't do it without them. No, this literally. This wouldn't be happening right now if it wasn't for our awesome life team. We have so many people serving today between all the different areas going on this morning. We literally could not do it with all of our, all of our amazing volunteers. So what we like to do is we love to celebrate at Real Life. We yes. love to celebrate and give away honor. So on April 27th, if you have served in any capacity in the past year, if you're like, is that me? If you've served once in any way, it is you. We want you to come. We want you to register so we can feed you. Yep, food is important. Food's important. And then we are going to have some kind of fun game that we're in charge of, so, <laughs> so get ready. Get ready. We don't know what that's going to be yet. And we're going to give away some awards and just honor you guys because truly we could not do it without you. And we are so lucky to have all the amazing people serving in all the ways that you guys do. So yes. we want to celebrate you big, but here's help us by signing up so we can feed you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we want to we want to put that breakfast food in your mouth. We want to thank you. We're so grateful for all of it. Well, I'm going to clarify. Extra we're not going to put it in your mouth, but we're going to I give you Keys Cafe breakfast to if put in your you own mouth. If that's what you want me to do, I'm not going to say no. Okay, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got real weird real fast. <laughs> So what we're doing next, we call this the two-minute mingle. We're going to get up on our feet. We're going to say hey to the people around us. We're going to take two minutes. Go introduce yourself to a new friend. Come on. Let's get up. Let's get up on our feet. Nobody stood during that. Come on.
Happy Resurrection Sunday, Real Life Church. How are we doing today? Who's excited to be in church? Anybody? He is risen, and you are having way too much fun in church. Hey, we're so glad that we get to celebrate uh, the greatest event in human history. We, I, I, I love coming to Passion Week and celebrating the cross of Jesus. We had an incredible Good Friday service, and there is nothing like Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. This day is about one thing and one thing only. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive, and he has radically changed our lives. Well, like we do every single week, give me just one minute because I want to look right into the camera and I want to tell everyone who's joining us at Church Online today that we are so glad that we get to be together for church with you. No matter what reason you might be watching Church Online, I know it's spring break and there's a lot of people traveling. I've had a couple texts from families today that are on the road. We're so glad that you're joining us. Maybe you're even catching up later on during the week. I love that technology lets us stay together. So here's what we do. Everybody in the room here in Roseville, will you help me say hello to everyone watching Church Online today? We love it. We love it. And again, I just want to say hello to every one of you. If you're joining us for the very first time today, I think you're walking into a very special place filled with people that are absolutely the best of the best. Here's what we do, what we do at Real Life Church. We're just on a spiritual journey together. And we're taking every next step that we can to become more and more like Jesus. If you're looking for a church home, if you're looking to find out more about Jesus, we want to invite you to be on this spiritual journey with us because I believe God is doing some incredible things here and we want you to be a part of it. We don't want you to miss out. And hey, just one last thing. I know Pastor Taylor and Pastor Miranda were giving some uh, updates on some things. One thing that we neglected to talk about last week, I want to make sure we talk about today. Uh, coming up on Wednesday is our first Wednesday service. It's April, April 3rd. It's our first Wednesday. Every first Wednesday of the month, that's why we call it our first Wednesday service, we gather for some worship. We gather for time in the Word. This week, it's been a while. I don't think we've done a testimony night uh, in church since the new year. And so we want to take time just to hear stories about what God's doing in your life. And maybe God's done something and he's healed the relationship or he's healed your body. Maybe God has done something that other people need to hear about. I want you to be thinking about that. We're going to gather together on Wednesday night tell some stories. I've got a couple testimonies, but we want to make sure that we also have an opportunity for you to receive prayer from our elders. And so it's going to be a night that's focused on prayers for healing. And so I want to invite you to come on out, set some things aside if you need to, but come out and join us for first Wednesday. Hey, everybody, take out this card again. Again, like I said, it's more fun when you play along. Would you take out the connect card? I just want to make sure that you've got this. I want to tell you a little bit uh, about this, and you don't have to wave it at me. I, <laughs> I fun. That was fun once, but come on, it's the, it's it's time for the next thing. That's like my favorite thing. I didn't even coach you, and like our teenagers are waving these things at me. Uh, it's amazing. We take the opportunity every year that's Easter Sunday uh, to to do a couple things together uh, with through this Connect card, and I want to tell you about it. If you're joining us online, or you'd want to do this uh, digitally, there's a QR code that you can scan uh, right here if you'd rather take the time to do this digitally. If you're online, there's a QR code right here on the screen. You can scan this. It's the exact same thing. Um, but I want you to take a look at this because here's what we do. Number one, I, we would just love to get some updated information from you. And I just want to tell you, this is a safe card. Like, we're going to protect your information. We're not going to sell your, you know, your email, your phone number. I know we've received some. I, I, I learned recently that, especially for our uh, Gen Z, our young adults, um, they love to give fake information on these cards. So they, they participate, but they give you a fake email or a fake phone number. Funniest thing in the world. I totally get it. Um, we're going to protect this. I was asked earlier today, what is this pink dotted line? Um, at the bottom of this card, there's a spot for you to fill in a prayer request. We would love 
to stand with you in prayer. The dotted line is there to help us uh, remove the prayer request from your personal information so that your prayer request can be confidential along with your information because we would love to stand with you in prayer and have our prayer team join with you, our elders to pray. If you mark that confidential, that prayer request is only coming to me and the pastoral staff. And so if you'd like to take advantage of that, we would be honored to pray with you because we're a church that believes in the power of prayer and we're a church that believes that God is still doing miracles today. On the back of this card, we take the opportunity of Easter Sunday to do an annual survey. On the back, it should read for you, 2024 annual Easter survey. We would love an opportunity to learn more how we can serve you. Why do you do this on Easter Sunday, Pastor Jim? Because it's the one Sunday out of the year where you all show up. Uh, There's a scripture in Ephesians Ephesians 5 that says, make the most of every opportunity. So I want to follow the word of God. And so I put this in front of you on Easter Sunday because all y'all decided to come to church today. And if you're watching us online, that QR code, this Easter survey is actually right there on on the survey card when you get that on your screen. So you can pull that up and follow along. But really, I just have two questions for you this year. The first is this, and it's really more of a fill in the blank. It reads something like, I would like to hear messages from the Bible about. And then we just give you some ideas. Uh, maybe there's even a, a, there's an other box where you can fill in your own. Uh, we, you know, we pray. And I, I spend time in prayer asking the Lord, what do we need to talk about as a church family? But I also think it's really important for me to know the conversations that you're already having and some areas that you need help in. And so what we're going to do with that information is we're going to actually take the top five or the top six responses uh, on these check boxes or even in the, the, the other line. And we're going to put a whole message series together just based on your responses in this survey. Does that sound fun? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think there's some important things that are happening in your life and in our world that we need to talk about as a church family. And we want to equip you well. I think that's one of the best ways that I can serve you is to know what's on your heart, know the things that you're facing, the issues that you're dealing with, and bring some hope from God's word to talk about that. I would love your help with that. So you can take some time to fill in the front of this card, fill in the the survey results on the back. We'll tell you more about that, and I'll tell you about the second question when we come to the end of our time together today. Sound fun? It's more fun when you play along. Sound fun? Let's go. Hey, today we're actually wrapping up a series we've been in for these last four weeks called Close to Jesus. I I love how the Bible, I love how the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, describe ordinary moments that people just like you and me had with Jesus. These people that lived in proximity, that did life with Jesus, that learned about him, that spent time with him, shared meals with him. And today, because it's Easter Sunday, we're going to spend some time focusing our attention around the empty tomb. There were some powerful moments that happened with the resurrection of Jesus. And we're also going to see something that I believe is actually a surprise. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to invite you to turn to John chapter 20. And we're going to read eight verses here together today. And I think it's going to help us really set the tone for where we go together in God's word. John chapter 20, starting in verse 1. John records this. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Let's just pause for a moment, because these next couple of verses are going to tell us something about the gospel writers, um, and also tell us that I believe that the Lord has a sense of humor Today's my favorite holiday. I love Easter, and I want to have some fun. Are you okay if we have some fun in church together today? We're going to celebrate some humor in the Bible, okay? This is awesome stuff. Look at verse chapter 2. Mary's at the tomb. The stone has been rolled away. She went and ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved. Let's just stop right there. This is John, the gospel writer. See his name right there where it says John 20? That's John, the writer, chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. That's that little box right there on the screen. So John is referring to himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. I, I think that's number one. That's awesome. 
Number two, John wrote this probably around A.D. 85, A.D. 90. Jesus probably rose from the dead around A.D. 30. So he's writing to an audience that never saw Jesus, and chances are actually pretty high they never actually met any of these original disciples. This is a heck of a flex of a guy who's coming to the end of his life Telling, telling you the story about Jesus and putting in a little footnote about himself. I love that the Holy Spirit, we believe that the scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit, but God, the, you know, man held the pen and, and, and the Holy Spirit allowed John to flex. I just think that's <laughs> hilarious. John's referring to himself, the, the disciple Jesus loved. And this is to what she said. She said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. The first thought that she had when she sees the stone rolled away at the tomb of Jesus was that someone stole the body of Jesus. Okay, we're on the same page. Verse three, so Peter and the other disciple, I, I'm gonna start referring to myself in the third person as well. So Peter and the other disciple started for his tomb, started for the tomb. Verse four, flex, both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. John is writing my jokes for me. I, I don't know why this is in scripture, but all of antiquity know that John is faster than Peter. This is what happens when guys get together and they spend a lot of time together. They do, they do silly things. They have funny contests. I love that this is here. This is such an incredible flex. I'm just amazed that it's here in Scripture. Look at verse 5. This is John. John bent over and looked into the tomb. And he saw the strips of linen lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. So picture this with me. John peers into this tomb and sees this. Peter, you know, he's slower, but he's not going to be beaten to get into the tomb, which I think is also hilarious. <laughs> Peter goes in. He's got to see and here these linens are exactly where they were, but there's no body. I, I imagine when I read this, a body-shaped pile of linens, but there's no one there. Finally, the other disciple, verse 8, the one who had reached the tomb first, went inside. He saw and believed. He knew in that moment that Jesus was alive. And it's the whole reason we're gathered together today is to celebrate the hope that we have in the empty tomb, that death didn't win on Friday. The tomb couldn't hold him. Hell couldn't contain him. Jesus is alive. And he's still showing up today. John spends so much time in his gospel talking about the night of, uh, we call it Monday, Thursday, M-A-U-N-D-Y, Monday, Thursday, the night of the Last Supper, talking about the trial of Jesus in the middle of the night and the crucifixion. It's interesting to me that these eight verses are the entire account of John on the resurrection. And actually, if you read the other Gospels, you'll see something very similar. A lot of time is spent on the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. And there's a few moments dedicated to the resurrection. And yet there's more content. John has more to tell us in chapter 20 than in chapter 21. The story's not over for John. And in fact, most of what they have to say about the resurrection happens after the resurrection. What did John need to tell us? That Jesus was appearing to people. That Jesus was active after the tomb. Scripture records for us that Jesus was appearing to people and performing ministry. It was more than the fact that the tomb was empty. Think about it for a moment. I think this tells us something about Jesus. If the tomb was the end of the story, if the empty tomb was the end of the story, the gospel accounts could have ended right there. But there's more. Jesus was appearing to people. John needed people to know that Jesus loved people so much that he continued to show up for them. 
This should give us hope that he wants to do the same thing with us. He's calling out to people. He continues to call out to people. And he will still reach out to people who are far from him. Jesus kept showing up for people, and he wants to do the same for us. And that should fill us with hope. It should fill us with absolute hope. Are you, okay, I already asked you this question, but are you okay if we have some fun today? Yes. It's Easter Sunday. I, you know, I actually didn't have a donut. I'm just highly caffeinated today. Uh, but I'm so excited. I love telling this story. So let's have some fun. Jesus, empty tomb, starts appearing throughout the Gospels afterwards. He starts appearing to people, like popping through doors and walls to show up to people. Now, the way my mind works is I start thinking to myself, I wonder who would I choose to show up like this? It just, I, I know I, ha I have problems. I understand. Uh, but join me, join me in my problems for just a minute. If you had the ability to just start popping up and appearing to people, who would you show up to? Who would you appear to? Um, you know, I, I'll just say it this way. I'm probably not as saved as a lot of you. I, I'd want to scare people. This is an incredible opportunity. I'd want to freak somebody out. Big time. Um, you know, I, I think about this list or I'd, you know, I'd, I'd either want to scare people or I'd, I'd either want to show up for people to show them up. To, to me, it's kind of like I start thinking about like, um, do we have any fans of The Office in here? Any fans of The Office? There's a handful of you. It's like the boom roasted uh, Michael rant. I'd want to like just start popping in. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we got a picture here. You know, he, he, he's got a list. Look, he's got a list. I would have a list of people that I'd want to be like, if I were Jesus, I can imagine how I'd want this story to go. Uh, you know, Jesus, he didn't show up at Pilate's house. You know, Pilate tried to kill Jesus. He didn't show up. Hey, I'm still alive. You tried to kill me. It didn't take. Boom, roasted. Like, he didn't do that. He didn't show up to where the religious leaders were. You know, the Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus because he was proclaiming that he was the son of God. You, you, know, you tried to kill me for that. It didn't take. Boom, roasted. The, the Sadducees, who were the other group of religious leaders, didn't believe in a bodily resurrection. They didn't really believe scripture when it said that someone was going to die and rise again. They didn't believe in that in their theology. So he didn't freak them out and say, you know, I, I, I'm actually alive. Boom, roasted. He didn't say that. Jesus didn't even show up to his mom's house. Isn't that interesting? The first person he didn't appear to was his mom. The last time she saw him, he was hanging on a cross, dying. Jesus' list is very different than ours. And I think it tells us something about the heart that Jesus has for people. Jesus has a different list. And Jesus shows up for people that probably wouldn't be on our list. The first person Jesus shows up for is someone who is hurting. He shows up for Mary. Look at verse 11 in John 20. Mary stayed. Peter and the other disciple who was faster than Peter took off running to tell the other disciples what, were, what was happening. But Mary stayed outside the tomb. She was crying. She was weeping. She was heartbroken. She was devastated. Not only just a few days before the Jesus that she loved was dead, but now in her mind, someone stole the body. She's actually so upset that Jesus appears to her right there in that moment, and she doesn't even recognize it. As she wept, bent over, she looked into the tomb. She saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. Jesus stays at the, or she, Mary stays at the tomb. She's heartbroken. And I'll just say this. I think Mary is a type for us in this story. Mary represents every single one of us that's carrying a deep hurt. A wound has happened. You've experienced a loss. Something traumatic has happened and you feel like nobody sees you. Maybe you're, you're here today, but you put a mask on to cover up the pain so that nobody knows. 
You're doing the good church game. But underneath that mask is a deep wound. The angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? And all she can muster is, they've taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was him. Other scriptures, actually, other gospel accounts say she thought it was the gardener. She didn't recognize Jesus until he spoke her name. She said, he said to her, Mary, and she knew. Jesus didn't show up to a disciple or a political leader, somebody powerful, or even someone that was going to worship him. No, he shows up for someone who's hurting and doesn't realize that he's even, even there. In those moments that feel like they're the absolute worst, Jesus shows up. How can you say that? Because that's what the Bible tells us about the character of Jesus. In Psalm 34, 18, we're given a promise that says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Just let those words hover for a moment. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. When you're hurting, Jesus is close by. So look for him. Look for him. Jesus could have appeared to anyone, but he showed up for the hurting. Because he's close by. He's close to the broken hearted. The second person that Jesus shows up for was a doubter. A doubter. Doubting Thomas. One moment of doubt, and the guy gets saddled with probably the worst nickname in the whole of human history. <laughs> well, maybe unless he was somebody called Stinky. Let's, like, let's, let's be honest. Doubting Thomas. One moment of doubt, and he's saddled with the worst nickname. What happens? Jesus actually appears to all of the other disciples, but Thomas misses out. Look at John chapter 20, verse 24. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. Why? Because Thomas thought it was game over. Jesus was in the tomb. He died on the cross. He was put in the tomb. That's it. The person we've been following for years is gone. Mission failed. And the other disciples come running up to him and they say, we've seen the Lord. And when he tell, they tell him about it, he doesn't believe them. He doesn't believe them. He missed out on something. And I think that's what can so easily happen when we have doubts. We miss out. Or maybe I say it this way. We have a different perspective. Doubters aren't bad people. They just don't see what the rest of us see. They miss out, and so they don't share the same perspective as other people. This is how Thomas responds. He says this. He says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and I put my finger where the nails were and I put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Those are strong words there. Unless I see, I will not believe. Maybe you've made strong statements like that too. Thomas is saying to his friends, you gotta show me. You can't just tell me. I can't just take you at your word. You've got to show me some proof. And here's what I love about Jesus. Doubts don't keep him away. Doubts don't keep Jesus from coming close by. How can you say that, Jim? How can you say he's, he's not going to be pushed away by our doubts? He's not offended by your doubts. He understands our questions. How can you say that? Because he shows up in the next moment for Thomas. Verse 26, a week later, his disciples were in that house again. Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked, here's where this happens. The doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them right through the walls and probably needed to say, peace be with you. Because they <laughs> probably freaked out just a little bit. And he said to Thomas, look, there, there's no discussion Thomas doesn't ask for anything. Jesus just knows his doubts. And what does he say to Thomas? Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. 
Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas exclaims, my Lord and my God. Jesus loves Thomas so much. Do you notice he goes back just for Thomas? He goes back just for the doubter? He doesn't rebuke Thomas. He doesn't say, shame on you. He actually moves closer to Thomas. He takes a step towards Thomas. He comes to where Thomas is right in the middle of his doubt. Jesus shows up. But he asks Thomas to do one thing. Reach out. Jesus takes a step towards Thomas, and he asked Thomas to do the same thing. This moment wasn't for the rest of the disciples. They already saw. They already believed. We've seen the Lord. This moment was just for Thomas to take a step towards Jesus. If that's you today, maybe you're doubting. Maybe you, you wonder, is this Jesus thing even real? I just want to tell you, your doubts don't bother Jesus but he'd love for you to take a step towards him. And I want to challenge you with that today. Your doubts don't bother Jesus. So reach out for him. Reach out for him. The first person showed up that Jesus showed up for was hurting. And the second person Jesus reached out for was doubting. Here's the third one. Jesus reached out for a failure. He showed up for a failure. He showed up for Peter. Now, Peter won a foot race. Good job, Peter. <laughs> but Peter was having a really tough week. At the Last Supper on Thursday night in front of everyone, Peter tells Jesus in front of all of his closest friends, I'm, I'm never going to let you down. I, I'm never going to betray you. Peter full-on Rick rolls himself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm never going to give you up. I, I'm never going to let you down. I'm never going to run around or desert you. Never going to give, never going to give. Give you up. It takes a great writer to get Easter Sunday and Rick Astley in the same room. I'm just going to say. That was terrible. Come on. But think about it. Jesus, I am never going to you, give you a problem. I'm never going to desert you. I will never deny you. And Jesus, I'm sure, full of compassion, looks him dead in the eye and said, Peter, I love you. But by the time the sun comes up tomorrow, not once, not twice, but, but three times. And actually, if you read one of the other gospel accounts, when Peter denies Jesus in the middle of the night for that third time, the rooster crows at dawn, and it actually, the gospel writer records that Peter and Jesus make eye contact. Oh, can you imagine the depth of the failure that Peter felt? Peter's response is probably the same as many of ours would be. Or maybe you're even thinking of this of yourself today that you think you're a failure. We think that our failures drive Jesus away. And I just want to actually challenge you to say that G your failures actually draw Jesus toward you. In Mark's gospel, Mary's at the tomb, that same scene at the em in the empty tomb, Mary's there, the angel appears to her, and the angel tells Mary in that moment, go and tell the disciples and Peter what you've seen. I think it's interesting that the, that the angel calls out specifically to tell Peter what she's seen. Why, why is that detail there? Maybe I'm making a leap, but I'm, I'm guessing that that angel knows what Peter's feeling. Maybe I'll even say it this way, that Jesus knew exactly what Peter was feeling. What is it that we feel after a moment of failure? We feel shame. We feel like we've let somebody down. We feel like not only did we dis disappoint someone, that we are, in fact, ourselves a disappointment. And what is disappointment? It's the gap between expectation and reality. I expect this, but this happens. And here's the gap that causes 
disappointment. Peter expected to stand up for Jesus. I'm never going to betray you. And he failed spectacularly. So many of us carry the same kinds of wounds. So many of you carry the same kind of wound. You'd say this of yourself, there's no way that God could be anything but disappointed in me. But here's the thing. God knows everything. He knows everything. And because he knows everything, there can't be a gap with God. There can be no disappointment. He knew what was going to happen before you failed. And yet, he still loves you. God can't be disappointed in you. I want you to hear that today. God can't be disappointed in you. Jesus didn't say to Peter, and he doesn't say it to you, I can't believe you did that. Jesus would never say that to you. Jesus would never say, I didn't see that coming. No, Jesus knew before, and he still shows up for you. Jesus showed up for three people. He showed up for someone who was hurting, someone who was doubting, and someone who was a failure. And he shows up on the side. There's this awesome scene in John 21 where the disciples are out fishing. Jesus is preparing lunch for them. They all come back. They have this incredible moment. But then Jesus takes Peter off to the side, and he asks, do you love me? Look at John 21, verse 15. When they'd finished eating, Jesus pulls, Jesus, Jesus pulls Simon Peter aside, and he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you, you know that I love you. And Jesus replied, feed my lambs. Now, there's some context needed for this verse, because the, the English language has one word for love. I love pizza. I love the Los Angeles Dodgers. I love opening day. I love Easter. But that word love meant something different in every single one of those sentences. Greek, the Greek language has multiple words to describe what we call love. There's nuance here. There's, there's this idea called storge. It's the love between a parent and a child. It's this natural affection that we have for family members. There's another word that's used called eros, which is where we get the word erotic. It's a, it's a physical love. Neither of those words are what's happening in this sentence. There's phileo, which is a love between friends. Like we get our city, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. That's the phila is phileo, the word for brotherly love. And then there's this idea of agape love, this unconditional, self-sacrificial love. That's the word that Jesus is using here. Simon, son of John, do you agape, unconditionally, self-sacrificially love me? And Peter's response is, Jesus, you know I phileo, brotherly love you. He changes the word on Jesus. So they keep walking a little bit. In verse 16, again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you agape love me? And Peter answers, yes, Lord, you know that I phileo, brotherly love you. So two times, same same words. If we don't understand the nuance, we just read this and think they're having an awesome moment. But there's actually something hard happening here. Jesus says, go ahead and take care of my sheep. I'll I'll still use you. You're still going to be of use to me. And verse 17, I love this sentence right here because Jesus asks him again, Do you love me? But Jesus changes the word to phileo. There's an awesome moment here where Jesus, in the middle of Peter's failure, takes a step forward and meets Peter where he's at. Jesus changes the word to reach out to Peter. And Jesus doesn't leave him there. He brings him home. This is the heading in your Bible probably reads the restoration of Peter. It's an incredible moment where Jesus shows up for the failure. Maybe you feel like a failure. You know, you'd say, you know, maybe your heart's not broken. You're, you're not someone who's got a lot of doubts, but you feel like you're a failure and that you've disappointed God. This moment right here, Jesus showing up for Peter reminds us that Jesus never gives up on you. 
And because of that, you're free to love Jesus. He loves you freely, so you're free to love him back. And that's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. During our Freedom Life Group this fall, we're studying patterns of things that we see in Scripture. What kind of patterns do we see that God uses to help us be whole? Going all the way back to one of the first stories in the Bible. The first story is the story of creation. God creates everything. The story immediately after that is about the fall of man. And in Genesis chapter 3, we get to see this incredible pattern of God moving and showing up for people. What happens? Sin happens. The sin of Adam and Eve happens. And in verse 7, it says, the eyes of both of them were opened. That's, that's saying that they lost their innocence as a result of their sin. They understood what, they, what happened to them. And they realized they were naked. This is that's the consequence of sin, is the loss of innocence and feelings of shame. So they sewed fig leaves together and they made covering for themselves. Look at verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from him. So here's the Lord. He knows what happens because God knows everything, right? God knows everything. He knows what's happened. And yet he's in the garden making noise so they know that he's approaching. He's coming toward them. God is trying to show up for Adam and Eve in this moment, but they hid. In verse 9, God calls out to the man. He's moving in the garden trying to find them, and then he calls out, where are you? God doesn't abandon Adam and Eve to their shame in their sinfulness. He moves toward them, and when they tried to hide, he starts calling out for them because God is all about showing up for people. God is all about showing up for you in your hurt, in your brokenness, in your shame, in your doubt, and in your moment of failure. God is actually drawing close to you in those moments. God is all about showing up for people who are far from him. It happens in the first story in the Bible, and it happens all the way in the last story of the Bible. Some of the, the last words of Jesus recorded in Scripture all the way at the end of Revelation. John, uh, Jesus appears to John in a dream about the end times, and some of his last words were about Jesus drawing close to people who are looking for him. Revelation 3.20, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If any of you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and we'll share a meal as friends. My Easter message for you is really simple today. God still shows up beyond the empty tomb today. In your hurt, in your shame, in your brokenness, in the middle of your trials with your finances, in the middle of your trials with your job, in the middle of your broken marriage, in the middle of the, the hurts that you're experiencing, might even be in the middle of your church hurt. Jesus is showing up and he wants to draw close to you. That's the hope we have in the empty tomb. I'd love for everybody to grab that connect card one more time. You don't need to wave it at me. But I'd love for you to go to the back at the, the Easter survey. We asked two questions. The first is, you know, how can we, how can we help you? And if you're watching online, again, this is, this is for you as well. In that Easter survey, we asked two questions. This, the second question we're going to ask you today is actually a spiritual survey. And you're one of four different, you didn't probably know this when you walked in today, but you're one of four different kinds of people in the room today. And that's what's represented by these boxes, A, B, C, and D. And I just actually ask you uh, just to be honest, and you don't have to be honest with me, but would you be honest with the Lord this morning? Because Jesus wants to draw close to you today. He wants to show up for you. So in a moment, we're going, to take a, we're going to take a moment to respond. We're going to kind of turn this into a, a worship moment. Let's pull these curtains down a little bit, and we can pull the house lights down just for a moment, because I want to give you some privacy. Let's everybody just be still for a moment and 
allow God to do something powerful. You're here, you're one of four people here. Maybe you'd be letter A here. We'll put this on the screen so you can follow along. And you'd say this, say, I'm already in a real relationship with God. I already know God personally. Man, praise God for that, amen? That we're in a, a relationship where God is meeting us and moving in our lives. And I just want you to mark that. If you've been following Jesus for a week or you've been following Jesus for your life, mark A, I'm already in a real relationship with him. But today I think someone actually in this room is letter B, and it's your opportunity to begin a real, a real relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you've had some doubts, or maybe you've had some wounds. Maybe you were part of a church once and something happened, or you followed Jesus once. But it's been a real long time since you'd say you were in a real relationship with him. Today you can begin again. You can begin a real relationship with Jesus. We're gonna take a moment. We're gonna pray all together for you that are, are marking B today. And number, letter C on this box, you might be this person as well. And you'd say, you know, I'm still considering what God's doing in my life. I hear what you're saying, Jim. I'm checking it out. I'm glad that I'm here today. It's been a great morning, but I'm, I'm still considering it. Be free to mark that. It's okay. Because here's what happens. Every year, we do this same survey every year. This is not new. We do this every year. Every year we have someone who marks C or D and they'll write a little note when they mark B and say, last year I was a C, I was still considering it, but today I'm beginning a real relationship. Go ahead and mark C, just be honest. Be honest with yourself and be honest with the Lord. And it's okay if you mark D. We love if you're gonna mark D in this room. D just means you're being honest and say, I don't ever intend to make that decision. And that's okay. Just have, have, maybe this is a little challenging, but have the guts to mark it down and just say, I don't ever intend to make that. And you know what's gonna happen here at Real Life Church? We are gonna love you unconditionally. We're so glad that you're here. And we're gonna pray for you that God just continues to work in your heart and continues to show up for you. Because God shows up for the hurting and the broken and the doubters and the failures. So we're just gonna take a moment. We're gonna go ahead and put all four of those on the screen. I just want you to reflect for just a moment and then we're gonna take a moment to pray. I just want you to mark who you are on this today. I love that Jesus shows up in moments like these. And if you're marking B today for the very first time, you're beginning an awesome relationship that I believe is gonna change your life. If you're marking B today because you're beginning again, man, welcome home. God is so, so proud of you. He is so excited to, to begin again this relationship with you. I remember when I was in uh, coming out of high school, I had wandered far from God during high school. And the very first moment I stepped back into church, I felt this overwhelming acceptance and love from Jesus. And I'm just praying that's exactly what you're feeling now as you mark B on your card. And I just wanna take a moment to pray for you today. Can you bow your heads with me? Let's pray together in this room. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful that you show up for the sinners, for the failures, for those of us that have experienced deep, dark, painful wounds. And Lord, as we're just honest with ourselves and as we're honest with you, Lord, we're celebrating everyone who marks A. Lord, we, we love that we are in a relationship with you. But today, Lord, we are so thankful for every single person who is marking B. Here's what that decision means, is that we are saying you are Lord of our life. If you're marking B today, I just want to invite you just for a moment to pray with me. You can even just whisper right there in those seats. Here's what uh, Paul writes for us in the book of Romans. He says that if we believe in our hearts that Jesus rose from the dead and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we'll be saved. So I'm just even gonna invite you to pray this with me. You don't even have to say it, say it loudly with me today, but just so you, you know and the Lord knows, Jesus, I believe. I believe you died on a cross for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead, that that tomb is empty. And today I put my hope in you 
that you are my Lord. And today I began a real relationship with you. And Lord, for every person who's in this room that marked C or Mark D, Lord, I just pray that you continue to show up in powerful ways. Show up through circumstances. Throw, show up through relationships. Demonstrate over and over and over how good you are and that you show up for every single one of us that's broken. And we pray this in your great name. Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand with me this morning? We're going to wrap up our time together with a song. I'd love to take just a moment. We want to actually collect these from you. So as we're singing today, a couple people from our host team, if you pass these toward the middle, we've got some containers. We're going to put these in buckets right here. And uh, we're going to just collect those from you. So you don't even have to do anything with these afterwards. Like I said, we're going to protect your information. But can we just celebrate every single person that marked B today? And they're beginning a real relationship with Jesus. Let's worship together today. We sing miracle. Miracle after miracle. Open door after open door. Here it comes, so get ready for another one, cause another one is on the way. with every single one of you today. There's nothing like Easter Sunday. We're, I like to describe our church as being a people of the resurrection, that we get to experience this kind of hope, Jesus showing up over and over and over again. And so I just want to say, I bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, if there's anything we can do to stand with you in prayer or we can serve you, I hope you put that down on that prayer request. Our Connect card uh, always has that in place in there. We'd love to stand with you in prayer. Don't miss out on First Wednesday this week. Come together for Testimony Night. Maybe God did something today that someone needs to hear about this coming week. Come ready to share. And I know, Pastor Taylor, you've got some uh, next steps for us here. I do. Yeah, we're going to dismiss in just a moment. But first, I just want to say, did anyone have Peter Rickrolls Jesus on their Easter bingo card? I missed that one. Hey, if you are here for the first time today, we can't emphasize it enough. We love that you are with us. It is our absolute passion to get to host all of you. We're so excited that you joined us. Um, you know, 
What you filled out today is one of our Connect cards, so it's awesome to get to hopefully have a prayer request for you so that we can surround you, support you with prayer. We'd love to continue to do that. If you want to... Uh, continue to be a part of Real Life Church, we invite you to do that. This is a place where you're loved. If you haven't heard it yet today, we love you. Wherever you're coming from, whoever you are, you belong here. We want you to be a part of our community. And so what we believe at Real Life Church is that life change happens through the context of relationships. So we invite you to connect with us, grow with us. We want you to join a life group, join a life team, uh, serve alongside people and grow in relationships. And then we want to help you go into the rest of the world. Sorry, you can put that QR code back up. A great way to connect is by going to connect.reallifemn.org org for all the links to event pages and all of the groups and ministries that we have available. If you want more info on that, I'm going to be in the lobby after the service. I'd love to talk to you. But for right now, I know we're waiting to get to like Easter lunch and ham maybe and all of that stuff. So I'm not going to hold you up any longer. Let's go. Have a blessed day. Have a great week. We love you. You belong here. Jesus loves you. Have a fantastic Easter Sunday, everybody. He is risen.